Well, welcome. In this video, we're going to be looking at the inverse variation model. And all it means by inverse variation is that as our values for x are increasing, our values for y are going to be decreasing, or vice versa. We could have situations where maybe our values for x, as they're decreasing, our values for y are going to increase. And that would be an example of inverse variation. Well, what form is our, our equations going to be in when they're dealing with inverse variation? Well, that's what we have up here. Any equation in the form y equals k divided by x, or we could say it that y varies inversely as x, um, is a situation of inverse variation. Uh, we say in this situation, we say that k is what we call the constant of variation. Now, there's a rule about that constant variation is that it's never going to be 0. Um, sometimes you'll see that expression k divided by x, instead of written as a fraction, they'll use negative exponents to say k times x to the negative first power. So just recall what we, what we remember from negative exponents, that if you see a negative exponent, it really means that um, we can make it a positive exponent by moving that uh, piece down to the denominator. We're going to look some more here at the graphs and the, and the names of these graphs now. So why don't we look at this in more detail? So here we have the um, two graphs, the one on the left and the one on the right. The one on the left is where k is positive. In other words, we're going to be dealing with a fraction with a positive number divided by x. If that ever happens, these branches, is what we call these, are going to be in quadrants 1 and quadrant 2. Now, if k is negative, it causes the graph to flip to be, instead of in quadrants 1 and 2, it's going to be in quadrants 2 and 4. So that's what they're illustrating between the two graphs. Now, we call these graphs, we call them hyperbolas, spelt like hyperbolas, but pronounced hyperbolas. And if you notice, both of these equations have asymptotes at uh, where y equals 0 and where x equals 0. Where y equals 0, that's going to be a horizontal line going through the point where y is 0. And where x equals 0, it's got a, it's a vertical line going through where x is 0. And the reason why it's got an asymptote, a vertical asymptote, where x equals 0 is because that's one value that x can never be. x can never end up being 0. The reason why, if you look at both these equations, x is in our denominator, and you can't divide by 0. So x will never be equal to 0. So there's where one of our asymptotes would be, would be where x is 0. The other asymptote is where y equals 0, because if you think about it, if I had the equation 7 divided by x, there's nothing I could divide 7 by that would give me exactly 0 as my answer. Because if I divide by 0, that's not possible. And if I divide by a number like a million, it's going to give me a decimal with a lot of zeros, but it's never going to be exactly zero. So you want to make sure that you understand the graphs here and familiar with the shapes of these graphs, because we're going to be looking at another type of graph here um, at the second part of this lesson. Now, down below here, I have these four steps. There's going to be certain problems we're going to have to follow these four steps. Some problems will only require us to do maybe two or three of the steps, where maybe they ask us to just write a variation equation, a specific variation equation. But let's talk about these. So there's going to be certain times where we have to start out by finding a general equation. By general equation, I'm referring to what we just talked about with y equals k divided by x. So that would be your general equation. Once we know what our general equation is that we're working with, the next step is to figure out what our value for k is. Now, to find out what k is, we're going to have to have a specific scenario, a specific values for x and y. So sometimes that will be from a story problem, sometimes that will be from a table. But we put in a specific value for x and y, and when we do that, we can solve the equation to find out what k is. And once we know what k is, we can go to step three and write our specific variation equation by just replacing our value for what we find k to be in step two into the general equation from step one. And then once we have a specific equation, we can go on to step four, which is to answer the actual question. So if they say, find the value of y when x is 12, you just put 12 in for x and divide, take whatever the value of we have for k and divide it by uh, 12. So let's look at one such example. Here it says, according to Boyle's law, the volume of a gas varies inversely as the pressure. In a chemistry lab, you collect data on the pressure and volume of a gas. So let's start with that first sentence. It says that the volume of a gas varies inversely as the pressure. Anytime we say, hear that phrase, varies inversely, it always means equals k divided by something. And typically, we would say it's in the order that it's given. We would say v equals k divided by p. 
But in this case, we want to use, we want to look at the table. And from the table, we can see that what, we're, what we want to do in this scenario is we want to use the volume as your x and your pressure as your y because the pressure is going to depend on the volume of the, uh, so the pressure is going to depend on the volume of the gas. And so in this scenario, we're actually going to write it like this. We're going to say y, or in this case the pressure, equals k divided by v. So next we're going to take, so we got our general equation that we're going to be working with. That's our first step. Now we want to be more specific. The question is asking us to find a formula relating the pressure and volume of the gas uh, sample you studied in the lab. So we want to have a, when they say this, they want a specific formula. So in other words, we're going to get to step three and we're going to stop. We don't have to go on to step four for this one. So the next step is to find out what my value for k is going to be by using specific values. And I can use any of the values from this table. It really doesn't matter. Now sometimes I might get a slightly different value for k depending on which coordinates I would end up using. But just know that if it was a quiz or a test, I would know all those uh, possibilities or I would specifically tell you which one to use to figure out what k is. Uh, just so that way we all have the same answer. But for this one, let's just go ahead and use when x or when our volume is 60 and the pressure is 84.6. So I'm going to put 84.6 in for P. And I'm put 60 in for my volume for V. So to figure out what K is, I would multiply both sides by 60. And when we do that, we get an answer for K of 5,076. So now I can go on to my third step. My third step is to write my specific variation equation. So I'm going to say P equals my value for K, 5,076, divided by my value for V, or my, my V variable. So that says graph both the data and the model on a single set of axes. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do that on your calculator. So what you're going to do is if you have your calculator, once you get it out, and then go to a spreadsheet menu and label your first column V for volume and your second column P for pressure. And again, you can get those numbers from right here. So why don't you take a minute and go ahead and do that. So pause the video, hit play when you're ready to go on to the next step. Okay, so you should have all these numbers entered in now. So what you're going to want to do next is we're going to create a scatter plot for this data. So go to the home button hit the histogram, so we're going to make a plot of this data. We're going to organize the data, so we're going to hit the tab button, and we're going to put the volume, or V, on your x-axis. Hit tab again, and we're going to put the pressure on the y-axis. Now, we want to trans... What we, we don't want to come up with the quadratic regression equation for this one. We want to put the equation that we just came up with, with P equals 5,076 divided by V, on this graph, and we're going to see if that's a pretty close, if, the, if that line fits closely to this data. So here's the way we're going to do that. Under Menu, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to whoops, Analyze. Under Analyze, we're going to plot a function. So Menu, Analyze, Plot Function. And what we're going to do here is now your calculator does not rep know what V is. So we're just going to type in 5,076. Instead of dividing by V, we're going to divide by X. And there's your equation. So we can see here that this line goes through the majority of those points. So it looks like a good fit line. So now the next step, it says use residuals to assess the quality of your model. Now I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator now. This is something that we haven't seen before. But what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what the residuals are for each of these points. And our calculator will do that for us if we go to Menu, if we go to Analyze, and then go to Residuals, and so Show Residual Plot. Now here's what it does. It just moved this graph up for us, and right below here, it tells us, so this horizontal line here that's kind of a faint gray line, represents the, how close each of these points are to the line that's being graphed. So let's look at this one here, for example. So this is saying that when x is 20, our residual is negative 0.5. So let's make sure we understand how to interpret that. Remember, your residuals are the observed value minus the predicted value. 
And that line represents the predicted values. Those dots are the actual observed values. So the fact that I have a negative residual here tells me my predicted value is more than my observed value by about half a point or half a unit. Well, this point here looks like it's pretty close to that line, but when you look at the actual residual, we can see that in this scenario, your predicted value is 8.7 or 8 .7 units uh, more than our observed value. Because if you took your observed minus the predicted and end up with a negative number, that means that your predicted number is actually larger. Or you could say that it's your observed value is 8.7 units less than your predicted value would be another way to look at it. So that's how we'd interpret all these numbers. So some of these are right on. Okay, so some of these we can see have a residual of zero. Um, this one here has a residual that's a little higher by 0.75. So again, what that would mean is that this is a scenario that my observed value is actually a little bit more than my predicted value. But the fact that they're all pretty clustered, pretty close to this line, uh, tells me that this still, in, you can not only get it from looking at the actual graph, but by looking down here at the residuals, you can see that it's a pretty uh, good model. So then it says, uh, what volume corresponds to a pressure of 40, um, keep whatever that represents, KPA. Uh, but we're going to put 40 in for your pressure using the equation that we had over here on the right for step three. So we're going to take 40 equals 5,076 divided by V. So to solve that, I'm going to multiply both sides by V. So I get 40V equals 5,076. Divide both sides by 40 now to get your volume, which would be 126.9 milliliters. So that's how we would do that one. So I want you guys to try this next one on your own. You're going to do the same thing. So we're going to plug these numbers into your calculator. For the average song size, average song size, and the approximate number of songs that could fit on a uh, MP3 player, 32 gigabyte MP3 player, based on that average song size. So plot those points um, on your calculator to be able to do parts B and C. But even before that, you want to follow the three steps that we did. So you first want to use a general equation. And so this is saying that the uh, you can see that as my song size increases, the approximate number is decreasing. And we're just going to assume that they vary inversely. So it'll be y equals k divided by x. So go ahead and set that up if x were your average song size and y was your approximate number of songs. If you want to use s for the song size and n for the uh, number of songs, like they say in the equation, that would be even better. But go ahead and pause the video, hit play when you're ready to check to see if you've got this correct. Okay, so let's see how you did here. So again, you should have set up a general equation in the form n equals k divided by s. And then once we do that, we pick a point. Now I picked the point where um, the average song size is 4.9 megabytes and uh, the number of songs would be 6,500. Now you might have had a slightly different answer if you used a different coordinate and that's all right. But for this one, when you do this, when you fi figure out what k is, we're going to get 31,850 as our value for k. So our equation, which is all they're asking for, would be n equals 31,850 divided by s. Now we're going to graph it. We're going to go through and do that part together. So you should have entered all those numbers into a um, spreadsheet. Then remember, you go to home and create a scatter plot. And we're going to put the s along our x-axis for the average song size. Hit the tab again, and we're going to use n for the number of songs on a, our MP3 player. And now to get the line on here that we just came up with, what you're going to do is this. Go to Menu, Analyze, and then Plot Function. Remember, your calculator does not know what s is. The only variable it's familiar with is x. So we're going to take this in as 31,850 divided by x. You can see that this looks like it goes through the data pretty well. We want to see how close is it with some of these numbers. We know that this point here is way off. But let's uh, um, look at the residuals now. So we're going to go to Menu, Analyze again. This time we're going to do Residuals and Show Residual Plot. So again, you can see that some of these are really close to that line. But then we have this one that's kind of an anomaly. It's kind of sitting out there on its own. 
because um, it was off, the observed was 847 um, songs less than what we would have expected. So that's it. That's, the, uh, that's where we're going to end this first video by looking at equations in the form y equals k divided by x. So basically these were hyperbolas, remember, that's what we call these. So in the next video we're going to be looking at this other type of equation in the form y equals k divided by x squared. So we're going to stop here. So with that, good luck now as you go on to the next video.